Hello and welcome to the Nature Unplugged podcast where we are all about inspiring wellness in the digital age. Let's get going. Hello and welcome to the Nature Unplugged podcast with me, your host, Sebastian Sloven, and with me, co-host Sonia Mohammed. Hi, everybody. What's up, Sonia? Oh, not too much. Oh, you welcome. Know, just hanging. How about you? I'm doing well. I'm excited for this podcast. Oh my goodness, it's episode 57. Cruising. You know what we're going to talk about today? I the do. Si- oh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> the science of awe. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Ah. So have you ever had your mind blown recently? Perhaps you had an opportunity to visit a place of epic natural beauty like the Grand Canyon or Yosemite, or maybe you spent some time looking up at the stars on a clear night. Mm. There's a word to describe this complex and mysterious feeling, and that word is ah. 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 In this episode, we're going to take a deeper dive into what ah is and the growing body of research around why it can help, it can make you happier, healthier, and more connected to others. It's pretty cool. Sounds great. I love ah. 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 I'm excited to talk about ABBA. Before we do that, we have a few updates, Nature Unplugged updates. Sonia, take it away. Oh, no, I'm going to start out. Yeah, you start. Yeah, I'm going to start out. Okay, so check this out. You may be familiar with this or you may not, but we've been doing a series of ENU challenges recently. ENU, of course, stands for Experience Nature Unplugged. And actually, we're just doing our second one right now. And so regardless of if you... Uh, hear this after the challenge is already out. You can join it anytime. But basically the first one was called Nature's Gym. And it was a weekly challenge or a a challenge for a full week of every day getting outside and doing your workout outdoors. So if you go to the gym, you mix it up, go to the beach, go to the park, wherever, just has to be outside. And this one is all about mindfulness in nature. And so check it out to be on our social media. It's on our website. I wrote a blog about it, but it's basically a challenge to spend 15 minutes every day unplugging from devices and practicing mindfulness in nature. There's some more parameters and stuff that uh, we detail on the blog, but um, check it out on our website. Why 15 minutes though? Well, 15 minutes, because I mean, there's lots of reasons, but you just need a few minutes to get the benefits of nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, 15 minutes was just a great number. A good sweet spot. Well, that's one in particular is about stress, right? Like reducing cortisol levels 15 minutes that's right that's yeah. right mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. okay what else we got more to come with those too stay tuned for oh yeah there's going to be more e-new challenges gearing up for a big one pretty soon exciting do, do, do. Uh, the other thing we wanted to share with you all is that we have e-new half day trips and retreats running through july and august uh, and they are mostly around san diego they're split up by age group so tweens and teens adults entire families the retreats are in Julian, uh, and the day trips are mostly around North County. Uh, for more information, you can visit our website and check out our events calendar, and you'll see which ones are coming up and how to sign up and more details about locations and activities. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Yes, me too. Well, sir. 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 <laughs> it's time to jump into it. Thank you for the updates. You're welcome. I also did updates. So I'll thank you did. myself. You shared it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Seb. Okay. Sonia, let's get into it. Yeah. What is awe? What is awe? Great question. Awe, of course, has been around for a long time. You know, people were probably having their mind blown forever, you know, (laughs) since the beginning of time. Yes. You know, being speechless, goosebumps, you know, these are the things that happen with when we experience awe. But what's interesting about awe, I've been kind of into awe lately, you know, I've, um, that's what prompted this podcast, but What's really interesting about it is I have uh, gone into it a little further is that from a scientific perspective, psychologists have only been formally setting off for the past 15 years or so, which makes it very young from a, uh, you know, timeline perspective and research perspective. So um, I think before we go into some of the research, it's very important to know that the research is young and there's a ton we don't know about awe, but what we do know is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a few people that are like 
the big wigs in the awe world. And uh, one of the one of the researchers in particular that I kind of checked out and looked into is a professor of psychology at UC Berkeley named oh, this is this is interesting Dacker. I should know how to pronounce this. That's okay. Dacker Keltner. Docker. Docker. Mm, Seems we'll circle back. Anyway, he's one of the the leading researchers on awe, uh, and he has done some. He and his his crew have done some incredible incredible work, but. You know, studies have shown that awe is often accompanied by feelings of self-diminishment and increased connectedness with other people. Uh, experiencing awe often puts people in a self-transcendent state, transcendent state, where they focus less on themselves and feel more like they're part of something bigger, like a, you know, a, a greater sort of. You so, know. like the self-diminishment, that's yeah. a positive, right? Like yeah, I, I feel more connected. I'm not so self-oriented. Self-centered. Like, yeah. It. Yeah, sorry, it sounds sort of sounds weird. weird. Yeah. Not like your sense of self-worth has been diminished, but your sense of like on the center of the universe is shifted a little bit. And then all of a sudden Got it. you're like, oh, I'm part of something bigger than, bigger than myself. myself, right? Okay. Um researchers also kind of talk about this as a way that's it's awe is almost like an altered state of consciousness and it's kind of like a flow state, um, in addition to it being an emotion. Mm-hmm. So all sorts of things. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, it's, I think a few things that awe is, is vast. The other things that these are some of the other things I came across is like, awe is, it's it like, there's always something vast about when you experience awe, whether it's physical vastness, you know, you're standing in front of like a redwood tree mm. or a giant mountain or whatever, or, um, you know, maybe it's like you listen to a piece of music that you sort of lose your sense of time and there's like a, a time vastness there, mm. all sorts of things, but it's really cool. It's uh, I think there's lots of interesting things we can talk about. Um, yeah. It, but I think one of the coolest things is that it, we shift from this like self-interested thing or person to really being open to something greater and then also interested in other people, which is cool. That is really cool. Yeah. So when's the last time you felt awe? Oh, that's a great question. I was going to dive into that. That's a great, great question. Um, actually, just this morning. Really? Yeah. Oh, in the ocean? Yeah. So I, as you may know out there, listeners, I um, am an avid surfer. Most days I go surfing, I'd say. And this morning was one of those days where I went. I went early bird. The waves are small, which is, you know, from a surfing perspective, you know, sometimes kind of a bummer. But from a awe perspective or just like being out in nature perspective it was really incredible because it is uh we're kind of midsummer mm-hmm. waves are small but the water was for san diego very very clear so like almost like aquarium like oh, clear small waves super clear water warm water clear sky clear skies beautiful clouds and i was just i was catching lots of little waves but then in between catching waves i was just really in awe of what was going on below me. And it was, it was seriously like being in a swimming pool. Uh, there, was, there was fish everywhere. I, there was one time I was just like kind of checked out, not checked out, but just like completely absorbed in the, like the subtle movement of the seaweed flowing with the waves. And I kid you not, this giant bat ray comes right underneath me. Probably like four feet. I don't know, like my giant. How can you tell the difference between a bat ray and a stingray? Well, it's a different episode, different topic, Sonia, <laughs> but you, we can, uh, we can. Well, because I was just thinking, I feel like I would be distracted by the clarity of the water because sometimes I get like nervous about what's in the ocean yeah. um, around me. And... I mean, there was weird stuff going on, including <laughs> there was bat rays. There was also, there was, that's all I saw up close, but there's definitely, there's definitely yeah. stuff out there. But a bat ray is more like a um, kind of like diamond shape, like pointy tips they're bigger stingrays are there's this could vary depending on where you are in the world but stingrays in southern california pacific coast they're more like round they're smaller oh okay uh, rounded edges they're bigger bat rays i mean they can be kind of small too but typically bat rays are bigger okay yeah they both sting same color bat rays are like more gray like they can they can stingrays they, are more like, sandy, like sandy sandy colored um this is all very dependent on probably a lot of different particular if you get stung is it the same treatment i don't yeah i think it is the same treatment i don't actually 
know if I've ever differentiated between a bat race sting and a stingray sting, but I think it's mostly stingrays. Got it. Okay. Thanks for that tangent. Tangent. Yeah. Yeah. So this morning I was just like, it made me very aware of the ocean is something that is awe inspiring. Mm. It's the, the Pacific ocean, Yeah. you know, the biggest one that we have. And uh, you know, oftentimes I'm out there. It's always, I think there's always some degree of awe when I'm out there, but there's something about when it's really clear, you're like very aware of, there's a lot going on down there that I don't know about. Yes. Uh, what about you? What's the last time you felt awe? I think probably the last time I felt awe was when we were in, what was that? Kuyam, I always say it wrong. Kuyamaka? Kuyamaka. State well Rancho done. State Park. Kuyamaka Rancho State Park. And we um, hiked Kuyamaka Peak and had a really cool 360 view of just like beautiful mountain hillsides. Um, and I think especially when you're sitting on rocks with sort of a drop off and it's just the landscape in front of you. It will, at least for me, it really helps me absorb what's in front of me and, and does sort of make you feel um, self-diminished in a good way, for sure. Uh, you know, interestingly, and this might be controversial, but I feel like this other memory that really stands out to me about feeling awe was when we did that flyover Canada thing. Oh um, yeah. Which is strange because it's Wait, like why a is simulated, that controversial? Well, it's like a simulated experience. It's oh, not, yeah. I'm not like really flying over the natural landscape of Canada. It's like a film, but they, they make it feel very real. You know, like you're on almost a ride and they have blow wind at you and water and have surround sound. And um, yeah. I remember being so moved, like all of the all of the goosebumps, almost tears, you know, tears in my eyes. It was like beautiful. Um, and to me, a very awe-inspiring moment. Um, so. Classic, Sonia. No, that was great. And just for clarification, right, I think you explained it, but it's a kind of virtual reality, right? It's one of those, uh, you know, you're in a, in a seat in a theater, but the, 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 the seats kind of lift up and move around and there's wind and sense and they make it very what's that? There's a word for that. What's it called? Like, is that vir virtual reality? Yeah. Or like experiential. It's like, yeah. Yeah. No, it's not, it's not controversial. I mean, we can talk about that more, but there's definitely research around, we'll get into this a little bit more, but there's research around different ways to get on. And mm -hmm. one of those is watching videos, um, like awe-inspiring videos, or mm -hmm. even reading like an awe-inspiring scene, like a really dramatic like description of a river you know, in Alaska uh -huh. or something like that. So okay. you can get, uh, you don't that. have to physically be there. Hmm. But as we'll explore here in a little bit, like the best way to experience awe is uh, in nature, in person. I don't know, I'll give it away. Anyway, <laughs> spoiler, alert. spoiler alert, there's going to be something around nature involved here. Um, so here's a question. Why is awe so awesome? Awesome comes from awe, right? There's, I think uh, so. Yeah, they're connected. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of ways. Should I just jump into it? Please. Okay. So, I mean, we talked about some of the stuff, so this may be a little bit of every you could information, but, um, you know, research is showing that awe may improve your mood and make you more satisfied with your life. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think part of that is, you know, really, I think a lot of the, the, the research and the writing about this and the description of how people talk about awe, the emotion of awe, is that it kind of takes us out of that mindset of to-do lists and checklists and, and the kind of the day-to-day -day grind, like where you're just like, okay, what am I doing today? I got, got to do this, that, and, and the kind of the, the, the mundane routine of things. And it's easy to slip into that. And awe is a way to like shake that up. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wow, this is pretty cool. Like, it's kind of like being, you know, the little things are more important and you can kind of like just automatically shift your mood. And that could be a piece of why, and we also know that research shows that just a few minutes in nature can boost positive emotions and boost your mood. And it could be a similar thing where you're, you know, looking at a tree or looking at the clouds or looking at the sun, you're like, this is kind of weird. Yeah. What's going on here? It's like moving you out of your executive functioning, right? Oh, yeah. Space. Of yeah. Like... It's more like kind of philosophical, almost more in a spiritual sort of dimension. Yeah. And that's one thing they talk about here, like a lot, uh, the researchers where, you know, most of the people in the past focusing on awe were coming at it from like a religious lens mm. and it was, it was more like a spiritual lens. Okay. Um, 
And what's cool about that is that not that it's not spiritual or it can be part of a religious experience, but if there's also, uh, you know, science and physiology to look at and actual changes in brain chemistry right. that, that we're still learning about when right. we feel the feeling of being blown away. Feel the feelings. Feel the feelings. Awe is also great for your health. There is a some research that shows that there's a, I don't have this right in front of me, but there's a particular genetic or uh, this gene, this, this marker around inflammation that it lessens, inflama- ah, it lessens inflammation is basically huh. the short version of it. And the inflammation of course, not of course, but is a, you know, generally speaking, a marker of like not good health. I mean, when we're- You're not cells, thriving when you're inflamed. When you're inflamed, things happen, disease happens, all sorts mm. of stuff goes down. Got it. It's not the best. And so, ah, is anti-inflammatory, they have found. Uh, there's also research around awe, uh, maybe uh, have a way to decrease our materialism. And like culturally, like our. Yeah. Or like individually. Our... Individually, I think, you know, huh. either. I don't know if they were talking about culture. I think this was more on an individual level, mm-hmm. um, you know, putting people, like having people watch like awe inspiring videos and then asking if they want like a, uh, some sort of monetary kind of mm. gift or a more experiential gift. They went okay. for more of the experiential. That makes sense. Gift uh, after experiencing awe versus the people that didn't experience awe wanted the monetary mm. kind of prize at mm-hmm. the end of the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about this a little bit, but I, I think also part of this materialism piece is, is it, and this is the big thing with awe is like we become less self-centered. We're more part of something bigger than ourselves. And this is a really, there's a really interesting kind of study. I just want to note that um, they did, they, this is kind of interesting, uh, had someone asking people at Fisherman's Wharf in this major tourist destination in San Francisco, right? Kind of in the heart of the city. There's lots of shopping and everything around there. Not necessarily not an inspiring place. It's more like sort of material world, shopping world. Um, they had people there and they had people at Yosemite. So, uh, and basically the researcher asked them to draw like their current self with like uh, in terms of size, uh-huh. like a circle on a picture. Okay. And basically the people at Fisherman's Wharf were quite a bit larger, 30%, they were 33% larger uh, than the people when they were out looking at like Yosemite Valley and the giant cliffs. And the, oh, that's and the fascinating. Did they draw anything else or just like themselves? I think it was just themselves. Mm-hmm. And like, maybe it was like relative to some stuff around you, but the basically the, yeah. The scale of self was large. The scale of self was larger. In the um, non-awe-inspiring setting. Correct. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. Huh. It's really cool. That so there's cool. all sorts of benefits to awe, um, which leads us to a natural next question. You ready for it? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. So how do we, we know awe is awesome. It's good for us. It's anti-inflammatory. It makes us less self-centered, less materialistic. It's good for our health. Uh, how do we get more awe into our life? You know, that's the question. That mm. is the question. That is the question. The good news is that there's a lot of ways to get off. We good talked about good. some of this already. Okay. Yeah. So it's not completely new, but um, I just want to share this with you. This is pretty exciting. You ready for this? Ready. Wait, are you ready? Ready. Okay. So in researching for this podcast, looked at, you know, read through a variety of articles, did a little research, watched some videos. And this is wild. The number one way, and this is a, a consensus consensus of what they all said, the best way to get off, what is it? Guess what? Guess what? Nature? Nature. Perfect. 10 points for Sonia. 10 points for Hufflepuff. It is nature. It's getting outside, uh, getting, getting off your devices, getting outside, but nature was the number one way to get more awe into your life. Was there like a specific type of nature? Did not that I, not that I mean, I think it's, in this case, if you're going for all like big views, like Grand mm. canyon stuff, Yosemite, mm-hmm. it's going to be, you know, better for the awe, Got it. for the awe factor. But I don't think it has to be anything crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, I was just even thinking about this. I, I um, was on a walk with a client after my surf session, lots of awe today, actually, this is a big <laughs> odd day, but we were walking in a kind of a little park area and was just looking up at some trees, some big like, kind of oak trees. And I was sort of blown away. I would think I was aware of awe, you know, so it was probably prompted for this, but 
of how crazy trees are that they grow from a little seed. Totally. I mean, it's obvious. It's pretty, we get that they grow from a little seed, but it's like, they get huge. Yeah. From a tiny seed. They do. It's pretty nuts. Anyway, so that's a way, you don't have to go to Yosemite. You could go to look at a tree. <laughs> Just a regular tree and how big it is. Or look at a seed. Or even a bee. Like I was watching the bees in our front yard the other day. Mm-hmm. Bees are awe-inspiring. What are they doing all day? Yeah, I like it when they roll around in the flowers to get the pollen all over themselves. <laughs> or a hummingbird, my personal favorite, the hummingbird. Mm. You don't have them everywhere, but you know, you find your version of the hummingbird, you get some more ah. Minor lizard. I love the little lizards, this, particularly the baby ones. They remind <laughs> me of tiny little dinosaurs. They are tiny little dinosaurs. Yeah. Um, another way to get ah is to get out of your comfort zone. This mm. is very much in line. Yeah, tell with, me more about that. Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think the idea is that when it's not for everyone, but as we get more comfortable mm-hmm. in our comfort zone, you know, uh, it could be like watching TV, eating a nice meal. Not that you can't get off from those things that are more comfortable, but I think because they're comfortable, I think by nature, there are things you do more often mm-hmm. and less novel. And so I think by stepping out, like doing something a little edgy, uh, you're more likely to experience awe. That makes sense. I feel like in your comfort zone, you'd be more likely to end up in like a default zone where right. you're on autopilot. You're on unless autopilot. Yeah. You're less primed for the awe experiences. Yeah. There's nothing, um, yeah, nothing like default about experiencing awe. Right? No. It's totally opposite. I have actually another awe story. Okay. You ready for it? Hit me with it. And this is actually related to getting out of the comfort zone. Mm-hmm. I got to keep I'll keep some names and things sort of private. No, I can I can share about the name. So I was with my friend Matt Matt Lampkin. <laughs> Call him Matt. He's our he's our dear friend and rock star. Check him out. He's actually got a new album coming out. Ooh. Matt Lampkin. We'll feature it for sure. He does the music for our pre and post uh, podcast thing. Anyway, I was with Matt on a surf trip. He lives down in Mexico. We went to a place that I cannot name, but it was, um, you know. Let's just say south of Ensenada, north of Cabo San Lucas. Let's mm-hmm. just say that. Okay. It's a large area. Just Is it like you don't want to? No, it's a secret. It? It's, a, it's a, okay, kind of on the down. Yeah, we don't talk about this. But anyway, we went and we went and uh, to surf this spot. And it's really hard to access this place. Okay. Mm-hmm. Some of what I'm going to share here, I don't necessarily condone. I'll just say that before it, but it would end up being quite inspiring. Hard to access, but we basically found a new way to access. Basically, you have to like rappel down this cliff, this rope to get to this place. It can be kind of hectic, mm-hmm. especially with uh, boards and stuff like that. So we found this um, weird little beach that was around kind of around a point from the beach that we were going. Mm-hmm. Uh, long story short, in order to, we, we were able to get down to the, this new beach quite easily. Mm-hmm. But in order to get to the place where we were going to surf, we had to swim through an underwater cave. Mm. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. The whole thing wasn't covered in water. Okay. There was some parts, but it was a, it was a cave in the water. We mm-hmm. had to paddle through it. We got through it going to the surf spot pretty with some minor scratches and things. It was pretty mellow. Mm-hmm. We came back. The tide had changed. The situation was quite different. The waves were crashing through there. It was really intense definitely out of our comfort zones yeah we got kind of blasted yeah for another kind of north, another story but we made it <laughs> and it was seriously a deep like afterward we were both just sort of the whole experience was pretty the waves were also very good the whole experience was pretty awe-inspiring and when we got back up we were just like i think both in sort of an altered sort of state of and appreciative and connected through that unique experience mm-hmm Mm-hmm. anyway getting out of your comfort zone is a way to okay get ah you don't have to swim through a crazy cave and get smashed into the rocks what else are there other things that are like more accessible about comfort zone no about getting on oh it. yeah that's good that's good i mean one of the one of the ways that i read i mean this is very much up our alley but i also other people said this too so you know it has to be legit but it's just taking breaks from our screens looking mm-hmm. you know looking up whether that's connecting with other people looking up at the sky um, I think one of the best ways also to get awe that doesn't require us to go necessarily to a, a wild nature place is listening to art that really inspires us, uh, uh, listening to art, listening to music mm-hmm. that is really, mm-hmm. you know, amazing, whatever that, I think that can be different for everyone, but whatever that music is, it really like gets you going. Yeah. 
I imagine also um, like dance. Dance like for sure. Yeah. It can be pretty incredible to watch people move. Um, to watch dance or to yeah, dance. To watch. Yeah, 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 for sure. But I think it's all that stuff. It's like watching art, dance, like ballet, uh, looking at art. I think this yeah. is, this. these are kind of like, it doesn't really, and there's not like a logical reason to go like look at art, you know, but it is, I think this is like a piece of. Oh, sure. Like why do people do it? Yeah. It's because like, it inspires off. A lot to of watch people. music. It's, I mean, there's fun aspects of this, but I think there's a lot of this that art, music, dance, performance can be, can, can give us a feeling of awe, which is, yeah. which is people I, have sought that forever. Yeah. I almost feel like it's um, a helpful synonym is like feeling moved, right? Mm. Like moved by the music or yeah. the scenery. Yeah. Um, often goosebumps. Chills. Yeah. Chills. Yep. Goosebumps. Mm -hmm. The, um, some of the stuff I was reading uh, from UC Berkeley, they, this is like goosebumps are a, uh, it's a really like specific thing for, of awe and it's, it's like a mammalian response that happens. It's not just a human thing. It happens in like, mm. you know, uh, primates and like rats and stuff like that give yeah. the, this experience of, of goosebumps in like an awe, okay. an awe moment. So like, that, I don't know that much about it, but it goes, the chills thing, if you experience that, that's awe. You're like, your body's not going to lie about the awe. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty, that's, I think that's a way, those are yeah. some ways to get more onto your life. And I think that goes, leads us right into a, a challenge okay. for this week, which is look for ways to get more odd daily. Is that a challenge or more like a, it's like a open-ended yeah. thing. It's just like, like tomorrow, today, even try and find a way to get some, like how to, bring more on to your life on a daily basis mm -hmm. and using any of the things we talked about or other things, but that can be nature time. It can be time looking at the night sky. It can be listening to like rocking out to your favorite music, mm -hmm. um, art, yeah. dance, whatever. But yeah. I mean, for an example, for example, we, for an example, for an example, we walk around the neighborhood a lot, like, you know, after dinner or something to <laughs> digest our food. And I can tell when I'm in my head versus when I'm just experiencing the walk because there's this one tree that we walk by um, that looks like a body in movement. It's like really incredible. And when I am, you know, aware enough, like out of my to-do list, my sort of thinking crazy brain, uh, and in the space of just looking around and experiencing the walk, I notice it and I love it. And I, every time I think about it. And so I feel like that's a, that's like a small way to bring an awe into your life is just really opening up yourself to look around and experience the world around you. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, th I think this may be sort of oversimplifying, but I think if you are, or if we are really in the moment, really mindful of what's happening with us, like there's no choice but to be experiencing awe on a pretty regular basis mm -hmm. with things that aren't that extraordinary in terms of like from the surface. Right. Right. Yeah. Like a tree or like a, a cloud or a, a bee. Cloud. Yeah. yeah. But lots of things in nature. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Anyway, that's a. Uh, so it's more of like a lifestyle challenge. It's a lifestyle just, challenge. Yeah. I think the challenge is do something every day or for one day. <laughs> <laughs> Start with, Start, Start with, with today. Start with today. Find some odd today. Say ever. It's an evolving challenge. Okay. Anyway, you know what time it is. Oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite times. No, actually, it's time it's, for um, Sonia <laughs> to do the new news jingle. <gasps> okay. <laughs> new news. Do you like that? Was that it? was great. <laughs> that was great. Is that like a little monkey before? <laughs> I'm a little monkey, so yeah. Perfect. Okay, we have some. This is very. I'm excited about this, this new news sort of because like it's ah-ish. It's ah, It's for sure ah-ish. Yeah. Ah it also doesn't seem real. Yeah, it doesn't seem real. But um, it is. Okay, so here's here's the headline. Ready for it? Cape Cod diver left with a whale of a tail after a humpback spat him out. Holy smokes! Okay, so here's the. Uh, this is not that long ago. I think like a month ago or something like that. You may have heard about it, but Cape Cod. This is northeaster. Northeastern folks, lobster diver, like so full scuba gear, is safe following a fluke encounter with a humpback whale that nearly made him, oh. Leviathan's lunch? Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know what that means. But um, 
So basically, this guy's name is Michael Packard, was diving off the coast of Prince, uh, Provincetown, Massachusetts, when a, basically, a um, humpback whale swallowed him. He was in about 45 feet of water, and basically he just, <laughs> this is the quote, I got down to about 45 feet of water and all of a sudden I just felt this huge bump and everything went dark. And I could sense that I was moving and I was like, oh my God, did I just get bit by a shark? And then I felt around and realized there was no teeth and I felt no real pain. Then I realized, oh my God, I'm in a whale's mouth. I'm in a whale's mouth and he's trying to swallow me. Uh, so that's the actual quote. And um, anyway, Michael kind of thrashed around for a little bit. And then the whale comes up to the surface and just blasts him out. <laughs> and pretty nuts. And I guess a friend who was, I think, either on a boat or on the beach saw this happen. Saw a whale wow. come up and this guy flying out and was like, what's going on? Zoomed out, got him. And he ends up being, and aside from kind of a few bumps and bruises, fine. But what a nuts yeah. And that's a what's the um, is it Moby Dick? What's the story yeah, about I think the whale? So. Yeah, yeah, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Moby Dick. I think so. Well, I, don't I can't know, remember. Actually, it's Pin I mean, there's Pinocchio. That's like old school. Yeah. I think someone I gets swallowed. Him. But I think it's Moby Dick. Yeah. I haven't read that one. Mm. It's a long book. Mm. <laughs> we'll circle back. It's, it's all relative. Uh. <laughs> anyway, so that's uh that's new news. Yeah, Guy gets swallowed one. by a whale. Lives to tell the Lives tale. Lives to tell the tale. Dang. Okay. I've had a few situations where I've gotten pretty close, up close and personal with whales, uh, gray whales, blue whales, some humpback whales. Mm -hmm. uh, one time I was stand up paddling in the vicinity of some blue whales off the coast of Del Mar. And I kind of thought about that. You know, one of these whales could just swallow me. It was, it was sunset. I was away. I was a couple of miles off the coast. Could have just gotten swallowed up. No one yeah. would even know anything. And I think about that when you tell me stories about like, well, there's this big whale and I started swimming towards it and like swimming well, towards it. I'm not like aggressively swimming toward it. I'm just like, I just want to look at it. You know, I'm yeah. keeping my distance. It's a mm -hmm. wild animal. Come on, Sonia. I'm here. <laughs> exactly. Okay. If I don't show up for the next podcast, chances are I've been swallowed by a whale. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that'll do it for this episode of the Nature Unplugged podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can find our episodes on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, and all other podcast platforms. We're now on YouTube also, which is exciting. Uh, if you could take a moment to rate and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, it helps our channel a ton. Be sure and visit www.natureunplugged.com for more information about our coaching, workshops, presentations, retreats, and other services. Uh, we also have, there's tons of free resources on there, like this podcast, we do a blog, we do a newsletter, all sorts of cool stuff on Nature Unplugged. And so thank you so much for listening. And until next time, remember to experience Nature Unplugged. And we get some off. We get some off. change like seasons out of our control if you think you should go i will let you go oh, oh.